Boston I'm 29 years old And I was born in Oklahoma Quarter Cherokee, I'm told Oh, Bill, it's so good to see you! <laughs> Welcome to the journey. All right, I'm glad to be here. What happened to Marietta Yeager shouldn't happen to anyone. It's the unimaginable. It's the unconsolable. It upsets the order of the universe. Marietta's story is probably one of the most powerful stories that I have ever heard. I cannot even imagine what it would be like to have something that precious taken from you. She is a shining being because just to be in her presence is a blessing. And to hear her words is an experience you never forget. Welcome to Texas. To Texas, here I am. I went on a camping trip with all my children, five kids and my husband. And I got down on my knees and I reached over to kiss each one of the kids goodnight. And the, my youngest daughter, Susie, who was only seven years old, was the hardest for me to reach. And I could hardly reach her. My lips just sort of skimmed across her cheek as I kissed her goodnight. And she said, oh, no, Mama, not like that. And she got out of the sleeping bag, and she crawled across her sister, and she got right in front of me, and she threw her arms around me, and she gave me a great big kiss right smack on my lips. And she said, there, Mama, that's the way it should be. And I praise God for that lovely, lovely memory because that was the last time that I ever saw my little girl. I really allowed myself to get in touch with my rage. And as my husband and I were getting into bed, I said, even if the kidnapper were to bring Susie back alive and well this moment, I could kill him for what he has done to my family. And so I asked God to help change my heart. And I realized that to kill somebody in my little girl's name would be to violate and profane the goodness and sweetness and beauty of who she was. That I didn't honor her by becoming that which I deplored, somebody who kills people. If it were to happen to one of my family members, I would be for it. That's normal for the family to feel that way. In the process, in the healing process, there is a vacillation, and that's normal. Would have been something wrong with me if I was not outraged. And victim families have every right to the normal, valid human response of rage and anger and even a desire for revenge. But to legislate that same kind of gut-level desire for bloodthirsty revenge in the name of the death penalty will have the same deleterious effect on us as a society as it does on individuals. It degrades us, it dehumanizes us, it debilitates us. Civilized society, then our laws should call us to a higher moral principle. They oppose the death penalty. I'm in favor of the death penalty. We'll debate that issue next on Take a Stand with Adam McManus. I find that oftentimes in um, some Christian circles, that there is a response to uh, my situation that I would have to characterize as unchristian. Adrian, what are your thoughts? Oh, I'm, I'm for it. And what specific biblical uh, verse or scripture or principle can you cite that supports your position in favor of the death penalty? Leviticus 24:17. if anyone slays a human being, he shall be put to death. He called himself a Christian, and he wanted to justify the use of the death penalty. And I thought it was very interesting that all the Bible quotes that he could find, all the sources in Scripture, were from the Old Testament. What scriptural uh, verses can you cite that favor your opposition to the death penalty? Well, I guess you start out with the Sermon on the Mount. He said to love those that hate you. They are looking for uh, a way to retain anger and a desire for revenge and have it supported and affirmed by uh, Scripture. You're distorting Scripture and you're trying to put this liberal spin on it that it's just a matter of interpretation. Uh, when I look at Scripture, I see a God who loves us, who forgives us, who picks us up every time we screw up. 
Go ahead, you're on the air. What you have, uh, Adam, is a guest who selectively quotes scripture and misinterprets it and twists it to prove her own agenda. And, you know, that is, that, that is despicable to me. You either adhere to the principles of scripture or you do not. Don't try to bend them and twist them to suit your agenda, madam. It saddens me when I know that there's a whole segment of Christianity out there who feel that it's okay to seek vengeance. For me as a Christian, God says, vengeance is mine, and I'm perfectly happy to leave it in God's hands.